This week we head down to southwest Oklahoma fishing in the shadow of Mount Scott as we explore two very different types of fishing there. We'll visit the department's newest trout area at Historic Medicine Park and also go after sand bass in Lake Latonka. Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Today we're going to be exploring Southwest Oklahoma and doing two very different types of fishing. First, we'll be on the Oklahoma's very first impoundment, Lake Latonka. Now, this lake is known for many things, including some great sand bass action. I like fishing for sand bass pretty much any time of the year. And that's the neat thing about them. They're available almost any time of the year. Summertime on top, springtime, they're certainly up shallow spawning. And then I'm catching them now in the fall. And it's, it's a lot of Let's fun. Go. So we're gonna fish Lake Latonka this evening. Hoping that uh, the sand bass and maybe even some saw guy are in. Every once in a while I'll catch a small mouth if we're lucky. Buddy John will join me here in a little bit. A lot of people by now have pretty much finished up fishing. They go to football and kids get in school and that sort of thing. But fall for me is the best time to fish. I, I nearly have the lake to myself every night. And uh, uh, the fish are still biting, that's the great thing, especially sand bass, they, and I think of them kind of as a fill-in fish, and you know, when, it, when nothing else is biting, you can almost always count on a sand bass to bite. Lake Latonka is our oldest reservoir in Oklahoma. It was built first in 1906, the dam was extended a couple of times, the last time was in the 1950s, and uh, that makes it 2,400 acres now and it's a fairly clear lake for the western part of the state, set in the mountains and near the refuge, in the Wichita Refuge, and uh, it's just a nice lake to, if, even if you're not catching fish, it's a nice place to be every evening. Not biting yet. Not sure if they will bite in this north wind, but I'm about to go over to that other point and try it out. Yep, Lake Latonka has good populations of sand bass, of course, and catfish, and we've caught some 10-pound uh, plus bass in this lake, so it's trophy bass lake sometimes. And then last year we got a smallmouth bass, a state record smallmouth bass out of Lake Latonka. So it's had some, uh, it's, it's an old lake, but it's still got some good things going on. I've tried it a few times with the north wind blowing in, and you'd think it'd be better, you know, being sand bass and all, but uh, Believe it or not, I've had better luck with the south wind blowing away from us. But tonight it's not too bad, so. I've been, you know, doing good here and here both. It really doesn't get much better anywhere else than right here. When I'm fishing for sand bass, I'm looking for a couple of things. Wind is very important. Uh, they tend to respond to windy points and, and windy areas because that's where the bait are, are uh, more vulnerable. Sand bass are more active there and so I target those areas. I've been catching them though here lately even in calm water. Uh, but it's important, I, I get there a little early and I don't catch fish until really the sun starts setting. So evenings and mornings and then cloudy days are really good too. What color you got on?
And in Otonka, it's got fairly clear water and decent sand bass population. And so I use things that, that look really natural, like this uh, sassy shad that's kind of a gray and black with a glitter in it, or this three inch curly tail grub that's gray, smoke colored. But um, you know, other lakes that, that have muddier water or, or when the wind's blowing, I'll go with something that's brighter that they can really see, like a chartreuse bait or this uh, clown colored grub. And uh, in turbid water, like say at Thunderbird or um, Carl Blackwell, then you want to go with a dark bait, something really uh, uh, dark black, red, something like that, that uh, really shows contrast against that muddy water for them. There you go. You keeping fish tonight? So that's my favorite color bait right there. I've tried um, that pearl gray, I mean that, uh, I've tried that gray. Went back to the pearl and that's what I caught it on. John's catching his on clown bait though, so, or clown colored stick bait, so. Catch them on a lot of things. You want that? There you go, now I catch it. Now get it. Where's he? Where'd he go? <laughs> yeah, now, this is uh, one of the City of Lawton lakes. The City of Lawton owns Ellsworth and Latonka. We're on Latonka, and beside your state fishing permit, you have to have a city permit as well. And, uh, but it's pretty cheap, a dollar a day or so. What is it, two dollars a day, one dollar a day to fish here? A dollar a day or two dollars Ten dollars for the whole year, so it's pretty reasonable. There's not much technique to it, you know, I'm just throwing out as far as I can. This is a seven foot rod built by my friend Kurt Kuklinski. Uh, got a little light action on the end of it, but a decent backbone. Throw out as far as I can. It's probably four or five feet deep out there. Sometimes I'll let it sink to the bottom, then start reeling it in, especially if I'm after saw guy. Other times the, the fish are right there and they'll hit it as soon as it hits the top of the water. Got one. Nice. They came back, I guess. That, that's why I like sand bass, is because it doesn't matter how big they are, they'll put up a pretty good fight. That one's a little bigger, mine is anyway. They were starting to worry me there. All right. You ready, Cal? You want that? Go get him. Get him. Where's he? Where'd he go? It's hard on the spur of the moment to get a, a buddy like John to come out. He, he comes with me once in a while. I get somebody to come out. My son comes out now and then. But the dog's always ready to go. You know, it doesn't matter. She's always ready to go fishing with me. Of course, she's always up for a walk, but then she likes, she likes the fish, too. I mean, she gets excited when I catch them. I kind of play with her when, when I catch one, throw it back. She chases it, snorkels for it. So it's kind of fun to watch her. I don't know, I just enjoy having somebody out with me. She's, she's what it takes sometimes. The dog is ready for two things, food and a walk. And this is how we both get what we need. She, she gets to walk over the hill and, and uh, gets to run around down here at the lake. And I get to go out and catch a few fish. And even these small sand bass, you know, they feel good on that rod. And there's kind of an example of, of a, a little bit of a falsehood among anglers, and we kind of put it out there too that any fish like this with broken lines is a hybrid. Well, that's, there's no hybrids in Lake Latonka, but that one's got some broken lines. And those are a result of injuries or uh, scratches and scuffs that they get early in life, and their, their uh, scales don't come back in the same pattern as they did when they were born. So. Even though they have broken lines, this is not a hybrid, and, and uh, a lot of people would think it, w it is a small hybrid. Yeah.
You know, white bass is a fish that just about anybody can catch. And, and the good thing is, in most of our lakes, there is no limit for them. You can go out and enjoy <laughs> catching all you want, really, keeping as many as you want. And uh, they bite in a lot of situations, a lot of lakes, almost every lake has them. The only lakes where we have limits on them are the ones that have hybrids in them. And the reason is we want to preserve our hybrid fisheries and keep them, uh, allow them to grow as, as large as possible. In our lakes with hybrids, we have this 20 fish limit, five over 20, but all the other lakes that don't have hybrids in them, there's no limit on sand bass. If you're an inexperienced fisherman and you pull up something that looks like a hybrid or it could be a sand bass or striper, it's good to go to our fishing guide and get tips on how to identify each of those fish. But the only places you really have to worry about whether you're keeping the right ones or not are the lakes we stock hybrids in, and there's only a few of those around the state. It's that time of year again when you can see the endangered whooping crane pass through Oklahoma as it migrates for the winter south from Canada to the Gulf of Texas. Mark, will you kind of tell us a little bit about where we may see whooping cranes in Oklahoma and how to identify them? Okay, well most of the whooping cranes pass through from mid-October to mid-November uh, and they're typically found around large wetlands. Uh, the reservoirs here in the state are a real likely spot to find them. Uh, also, some of the larger rivers, like the Canadian River and the Cimarron River, cranes will sometimes roost there. Uh, and then people will occasionally find them out in wheat fields, where they're, they're hunting grasshoppers uh, in these fields, sometimes in association with sandhill cranes. Sure, and they're usually on the western half of the state, correct? Yeah, they typically pass west, west of I-35. Yes, but last year we had a few pass, Lake Overholster in Oklahoma City and Lake Hefner, which was really neat to see yeah. as well. I'm guessing it was the drought just limited the habitat out west and pushed them farther east. But yeah, we had we had the one here in October and then two more in November, which yes. has never happened before. They're such a sight to see as they are such tall birds standing at what, nearly five feet tall? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the Wildlife Department asked that you report your sightings of whooping cranes to Mark Howery, biologist for the department. And please note the time, date, location, habitat type, and number of birds as you see them and call Call Mark Howry at 405-990-7259. We've been telling you for a while about the intense upland game bird research that has begun in western Oklahoma. And now if you'd like to get the scoop direct from our biologist on the latest information about the research, you can now sign up to receive periodic update emails. Just go to wildlifedepartment.com's quail page and click to sign up for the Upland Update. The Oklahoma Department of Wildlife and Oklahoma State University are conducting quail research on two of our Northwest Wildlife Management Areas, Pack Saddle and Beaver River WMAs. As part of that research, we are capturing birds and fitting them with a small leg band, and some of the birds are also getting fitted with a radio transmitter, and that helps us follow the birds as they move throughout the habitat, and we can see what they prefer or what they may not prefer. Uh, if you are planning on hunting either of these areas, please check the birds that you harvest for either the band or the transmitter. If you want, you can uh, feel free to keep a memory of your hunt, but please give uh, the number on the band a call just to let them know that you've harvested that bird. Voting is now open to pick the winner of next year's Oklahoma Waterfowl Stamp. The 2014 stamp will feature the canvas back. 20 artists have submitted entries, and we'd encourage you to go to our website at wildlifedepartment.com and vote for your favorite. The polls close November 30th.
Oklahoma has numerous trout fishing destinations across the state, and last year the Wildlife Department added yet another opportunity for trout anglers. Medicine Park in southwest Oklahoma now offers trout fishing. Now, this area is definitely a gem of the state, but adding trout fishing to the menu makes this an even greater destination for Oklahomans. Originally, I'm from Holland. I didn't start fishing till I was probably in my 40s. And when I caught that first fish, I was hooked. <laughs> but I think my most favorite is trout fishing. So just, just love it. I just, they put up a good fight, and it, they're really fun to catch. So I even fish when it's cold, cold, you know, where you have to make a hole in the ice. <laughs> you know, just where you things for everything freezes up and you have to thaw it out, you know, turn the heater on in your vehicle and <laughs> so I'm kinda I guess addicted to what you call it. Since we've been out here thirty or forty times in the last couple of months. We have caught quite a few fish and give a lot of them away. We use a double hook catfish rig with, with fire bait on a number 10 hook. I, I usually catch the largest, but he catches the most. It's safe out here. Everyone has been real. A lot of nice people. We met people from Corn, Tuttle, Moore, Edmund, everybody driving down to fish. It's been a really good year for us. The response has been great. The fishing has been great. Uh, couldn't have been asked for better uh, timing, really, for the, for the town and for the area. We've seen fishermen from all over the state of Oklahoma, plus several other states we would come in from Missouri, Mississippi, Texas. The, the fishing, I think, this year brought a, an influx of people that would have never came to this town uh, because once they seen and heard about the trout fishing, they came here and they got a little extra out of it, you know. They got to, to visit a town that they didn't really know existed in Oklahoma. It sits right at the edge of the wildlife refuge, so they're less than three miles from going into one of the premier refuges in the, in the country. The thing that has also been a plus for this area is the kids that you've seen fishing this year here. Uh, a lot of families, we've seen just tons of families come out and fish on weekends. It's been a real, real plus for this community and, and I'm not going to lie, a plus for our business. It's easy access, easy fishing, you can bring your kids down, you can bring yourself down and uh, you know, you won't, you probably won't find a nicer setting to fish than the Medicine Park, Oklahoma just to get away and see something different that you probably ain't gonna see anywhere else in the state.
<laughs> I'm not the best fisherman in the world, but I like to wet a hook every once in a while. And it's not because there's not fish here, it's because I uh, am not the best fisherman in the world. Wasn't too interested in it, but when they started stocking the trout and I, I learned of it, that's when I started coming down here pretty regularly. So this has been a pretty good deal for me. Uh, I'd, trout, I'd fish for trout when I, was in the, uh, when I was in the Army, when I was at Fort Leonard Wood and uh, up in upstate New York, Fort Drum. Uh, well, the atmosphere, it's easy and it's uh, accessible. I mean, I was just at work 10 minutes ago and, you know, drove 10, got here, and I'm already fishing. And uh, that's one of the things I like about it now, and especially daylight savings time, I can uh, spend a couple hours here now, you know, each day I come out. The other places I've fished were a little bit more remote, put it that way. Uh, you know, you get Medicine Park, uh, the community is right here, uh, 50 feet away. Um, and uh, it, you know the, the atmosphere, it's really nice and uh, just, just a pleasant place to be. Plus if I, you know, if I get tired of trout fishing, I can just pop over and go up to the dam and, and fish for crappie or whatever. And uh, I'll tell you, personally, I'm, I wasn't much into fishing before, I'm more of a hunter. But uh, this has kind of got me back into the fishing atmosphere, if you know. Medicine Park is kind of its own little, you know, its own little species and, and uh, its own little world, and, and we call it, you know, the vortex or whatever here. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a cool little place, and it, it is renting people all the time that come here. They say, well, this isn't Oklahoma, you know, but it is, and uh, here we are. And yeah, the trout thing is, is a natural fit. It, uh, you know, it goes along with a lot of the other things that we try to promote, you know, outdoor activities, you know, mountain biking, hiking all those kinds of things and uh, it, it's just a real natural fit. We've got families down here with young kids catching fish for the first time. You know we see guys out here with nice fly fishing rigs and we see kids out here with Walmart fishing poles you know out there you know uh, having fun and and uh, and that's the thing we like to promote more than anything is, is is family experiences and you know and everybody being involved. People that come from out of town and uh, they're going to eat in the restaurants if nothing else, but they may spend the night, you know, and uh, you know, visit the shops and, and do all those other kind of things that are here. Uh, MedicinePark.com, you can uh, you can book rooms, uh, you can check out any and all events. Uh, I think we have a, I'm pretty sure we have a link uh, that you can get your fishing license online. Uh, so uh, look us up and come see us. Well, there's several trout areas in the state of Oklahoma. Many people are familiar with uh, Blue River. Uh, Mountain Fork, uh, Lower Illinois, and he here we have another one in, in Medicine Park. Before you head out to a trout area to go fishing, make sure you consult the regulations so you, that you know that you're following the law. Here in Medicine Park, um, during the trout season, which runs uh, from mid-November uh, to March 15th, uh, there is a one pole limit while you're fishing during the season, as well as a six fish daily limit. Um, no calling of a fish once they're placed on a stringer, uh, they need to stay on the stringer. Just encourage people uh, to, to bring somebody new fishing this year, you know, if, and I really encourage you guys to come out uh, and uh, do some fishing here in southwestern Oklahoma. Hey, thanks for joining us today. For all of us at your wildlife department, we encourage you to connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll see you next time right here on Outdoor Oklahoma.